Hey, what's up? I'm Jesse. Uh, I'm from Brantford, Ontario. I spend almost more time here in the beautiful city of Hamilton. Uh, I play drums and do vocals for Alert the Audience. I also play drums in the Nervous Rex, and when we're not too busy, part of an indie duo called Burning Building. So main influence for me growing up, music is probably one of the most important things in my life, aside from my family. Um, so uh, started listening to music at a very young age. The reason why I got into music was uh, Jeremy Taggart, the drummer from Our Lady Peace, and this record right here, uh, clumsy, classic uh, Canadian alt-rock record. So Jeremy Taggart, the reason why I wanted to start playing music, uh, drums in particular, um, heard that record uh, when it came out, you know, 1994, 1995 and it set me on the path of wanting to become a musician. It took a while, but uh, here we are. Um, so I discovered what I guess was pop punk that I didn't know at the time. Uh, 94, 95, a family friend uh, who I was hanging around with um, had Dookie by Green Day on CD and I heard it. I was probably nine years old and I was like, what is this? Uh, so I asked my mom uh, if she could order me the CD from Columbia House Records, and I got Dookie by Green Day via mail order. Uh, and from there, it was finding a lot of cool bands. Um, I had a friend that was super into The Offspring at the time, and I didn't discover them until much later. I was almost like a little tiff back and forth, who was cooler, The Offspring or Green Day. Um, so. Before high school, I was listening to Our Lady Peace, I was listening to a lot of Green Day, Nimrod came out, so I was big into that record too. Uh, got into some new metal when Limp Bizkit and Korn were on the scene, and I thought that was like the hardest that music could ever get, little did I know. Um, Blink-182 uh, was a natural uh, progression in the pop-punk realm when Enemy of the State came out in 99, I didn't find their older stuff until a while later. Um, it wasn't until probably I was 15 when I had a friend at school that told me that there was more to punk than pop punk. And I found bands like Anti-Flag, some of the oi punk stuff, political punk, I got kind of involved with that. Started going to local shows. Um, a big turning point uh, when I was living in Cambridge, I walked into the West 49 uh, at the mall in Cambridge and the Lawrence Arms were playing on the stereo there. This record, Apathy and Exhaustion. Uh, Lawrence Arms are probably my favorite punk band of all time, one of my favorite bands, and so this band changed my life um, in terms of music. So that was a big thing. Um, I found cool bands like Saves the Day, Through Being Cool is an amazing record. Again, more pop punk, but just like super influential for the scene. Um, when I started getting into heavier stuff, I found bands like Refused. Uh, this record, Shape of Punk to Come, probably one of the most prolific post post-hardcore punk records ever. Um, that led me to find more modern bands like Blood Brothers out of Seattle. And of course, from, you know, right here in Ontario, Alexis on Fire. So that helped kind of merge things into more screamo, more hardcore. Um, it hasn't really been until more recently that I found more metal that I've been really into. Um, but that's cool, things evolve and people change. Um, my favorite current punk band uh, Idols out of the UK. Um, this record, Brutalisms from 2017, um, they're kicking ass and taking names all, all across. So, uh, great band, check all those bands out. Uh, my first concert. I like to tell people that in 1998 I went to the Air Canada Centre with my parents and I saw Our Lady Peace during their Happiness is Not a Fish That You Can Catch tour. That's what I tell people. Uh, in reality, my first real concert, I went with my mom to see French Canadian singer Rock Cuisine at Budweiser stage, um, probably when I was like seven or eight years old. Um, but I don't tell a lot of people that. Did they cover Our Lady Peace? <laughs> I wish. Um, my first punk show, it would have been a local show in Cambridge, and honestly, I went to local punk shows in Cambridge, Ontario as much as I possibly could. 
like almost every weekend if it was if there was a show I was going to it to tell you who that band was I don't know Lisp was around at the time uh, Cat's Pajamas sweet ska punk band from Cambridge um, bands like Cerebral Scrub were playing uh, man so many friends are doing cool shit in Cambridge Kitchener Waterloo that were playing when I was starting to go to shows and playing in bands there um, first big punk show was the Pop Punk Disaster Tour with Green Day, Blink-182, and Saves the Day opening at, um, again, Molson Amphitheater. Probably in like 2002 or 2001. Yeah. Too many shows now. Oh, favorite shows is obviously like a super tough question. I feel like I've been to a ton of shows and most of them are all pretty great. Um, up there that I can think of off the bat, um, my wife and I and a couple of friends drove from uh, here in Ontario to Chicago in 2009 to see the Lawrence Arms play. They played with Mets. It was their 10th year anniversary show. So like that road trip and seeing them play being like my favorite punk band. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Uh, they made a DVD. Uh, my tall, lanky frame is in the DVD in the shot randomly, so that's cool. Um, definitely up there. Uh, uh, and more recently, when Refused came back for their reunion the first time around, saw them in Toronto. It's one of those bands you think you're never going to have a chance to see, um, so that was, that was awesome. Uh, I've seen them again since then, because uh, so, now they're just a band that plays. Um, in a similar fashion, uh, last summer got to see Rage Against the Machine here in Hamilton, a show that had been postponed for a number of years. Um, saw them with Run the Jewels, love Run the Jewels. Um, so that show, for being a big show and being at a really big venue in Hamilton, actually pretty great. Pretty great quality, super happy with it. Um, another one too, the first time I saw Idols, uh, when they came to Toronto, they played at a Hard Luck Bar. So tiny little venue in Toronto uh, with a band that was just blowing up, killing it. So, yeah, those are some, some awesome shows that I can remember. Uh, so craziest shit at shows. I will premise it by saying that, like, this isn't crazy, but this is probably something that everyone can um, attest to. One of my favorite things about shows in general is just, like, going to a city that maybe you don't live in, or even one that you do live in, and just running into friends and people you've met before that maybe you haven't seen in a long time and just being like you're here that is amazing uh seeing people and just like sharing in that joy that like music can bring i love that i think that's crazy i think the universe is wild and chaotic and and running into people like that awesome uh actual crazy shit. i don't have a ton of stories i have two examples one from a local show when i was younger uh again shout out KW, um, my friend Jake from Cerebral Scrub and Block Parent, fantastic punk band uh, in Cambridge doing cool shit. Uh, Jake from Block Parent, at this time playing with his other band Cerebral Scrub, uh, had a thing where he brought uh, produce to stage, on stage, and my wife and I, girlfriend at the time, at a show way up front. And Jake full-on threw a cabbage into the air and baseball batted it out amongst the crowd. And we were covered in salad. Coleslaw, I guess you could say. So, yeah. Uh, stuck with me forever. Will stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, craziest thing at a big show. Uh, a few friends. We went down to Buffalo to go see Real Big Fish, Less Than Jake, 2007. Um, and we wanted to grab weed before the show. At this time, it was not legal in the state of New York. And so, uh, us being like 21, 20 and 21 years old, decided it would be really smart of us to meet a random dude, downtown Buffalo, who called himself the Scoob. And we followed this guy into a bunch of rough neighborhoods. Us three white boys downtown Buffalo, trying to score weed. It was probably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. It worked out, and Scoob was a really, really, really nice guy. We did miss most of the show. But here we are. Uh, 
Uh, past and present bands, like many people I know, I've played in a lot of bands. Sometimes I find myself in situations where I'm committing to too many things and I don't have the time. I just love it too much. Uh, so, uh, to tell you about the bands I have played in and currently play in, uh, two years ago for my birthday, my bandmate, my best friend, Mike, longtime collaborator, uh, made me uh, this poster. Uh, I swear it's not a vanity project. I don't keep this above my bed. Uh, I have a hard time accepting things like this. Uh, I don't want to look at myself. However, this is a great um, outline of all the bands that I've played in, anything that has been at least somewhat relevant, meaning more than just a jam. So in chronological order, uh, beginning in Cambridge, Randall Minus One, first band I ever played in. I played bass, did vocals, shitty punk band. Um, you know, everyone's got a first band. It is what it is. Don't regret it for a minute. Um, while I was in high school, I played one show at my high school for a talent show with the Go-Go Gorillas. We were a ska punk band. We wrote three songs. We had trumpets. It was not great. Um, but ska is cool. Kudos to those people that can play it well, because I cannot. Um, my first serious band that played for a very long time with my good friend Mike and with my other good friend Mike, who also play in my band Alert the Audience, You, Me, and the Machine from Cambridge was a band that we had active playing in Southern Ontario from probably 2003 up until 2015. Quite a long time. Um, when I was in college, I played in a screamo hardcore band called The Tragedy. That was my first dabble into playing really heavy stuff. Um, that continued uh, with a band here in Hamilton uh, called The World That Summer with really cool people like Steve Voss of Adelita. Shout out, fantastic Hamilton punk band doing really cool shit. Um, I've done some like indie pop projects with uh, your least favorite friend which transitioned into my current indie pop duo thing Burning Building. We've got some stuff streaming, you can listen to it. Uh, I played in a hip-hop band, a monster-themed hip-hop band uh, based out of Hamilton called Monster Fever. We dressed up like monsters, we sang hip-hop songs about the struggles that monsters would go through. Shout out Monster Fever. Youth on Drugs, uh, Hamilton pop-punk band Ramones Core, uh, not broken up, maybe maybe one day we'll be able to do something again. That's with uh, my good friend Lindsey Bird and Steve Oss and my good friend uh, Oliver Liddicote. Uh, maybe we'll do something eventually. Um, I've got good friends in the city, Thomas Duxbury, New Mother Nature. Really cool guy, great band, I played drums with them for a little bit. Um, and that kind of brings me to what the audience. Uh, we're a band. We're a real band with real humans playing real stuff, doing cool shit. That's the history. So my favorite things about being a musician. Um, number one is probably just like the social aspect of it. Um, connecting with friends, with family, with other musicians. Uh, I'm... I'm probably a very extroverted person so like going to shows and like getting together with people I love it I love reconnecting with people I haven't seen I love meeting new people especially that play music or appreciate music in general um, so yeah sharing sharing that sharing what you create and like writing with people and jamming and just making art love it love all that shit love playing it's all cool um, there's not a lot I dislike about being a musician. Probably when I was younger, and I think anyone that plays music can attest to this, like when you're younger working with other people, sometimes you can get involved with people that have the wrong personality, you don't vibe with people, so sometimes finding and vibing with people, that can be difficult. And like, I mean, it still happens now, for sure. Um, probably the thing that I probably dislike the most now is like, Anytime that I am involved with trying to organize or promote stuff, I've done some organization and booking and promoting. I don't know how people that do that full-time do it. Kudos to them. A ton of respect from the little that I've done. It can be super stressful, super overwhelming, super disappointing when things don't work out. So that aspect of pulling it all together because I love being organized, I'm a planner, 
dealing with that and working with other people's schedules, uh, it's not for me. So that's about it. Uh, my favorite food. I thought I was going to struggle with this because food's fantastic. I love food. I love cooking. So it's like, how do you pick one thing, like one place or one style of food or one thing? And I thought about it and I came up with my answer and I know what it is. Sandwiches. Sandwiches in general, pretty much any kind of sandwich, anything on or between bread, I love it. I will make the argument that a taco is a folded sandwich. I would argue a pizza is an open face sandwich. So sandwiches, killer, love it. Give me a sandwich, I will be very happy. Uh, my most useless talent. I don't have anything super cool. I can't do cool stuff with like my body or make cool sounds or something. I'm pretty good at accents, but I won't do it when asked. So I won't do it now. Probably the thing that is the only thing I'm okay with uh, is I have a knack for learning and memorizing song lyrics, movie quotes, show quotes, the chronology of when like albums came out or like when tours happened. All that cool stuff that's like a really big bank of knowledge in my head that doesn't really do more than maybe impress some other dude that really likes that band too in the moment. Um, and in terms of like music, I, I don't know how to read music. I've never taken a, a music lesson in my life. I don't really understand it. Um, but I've gotten this far. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at hearing stuff and then figuring out how to play it. Uh, I can listen to songs on drums and then basically just emulate the beat. So I guess that's cool. Uh, doesn't make me any money, but you know, one day. Yeah, so that about does it for me, uh, chatting with you. Um, again, my name is Jesse. Um, I play in Alert the Audience. We have some cool shit happening. So um, June 28th, 2024, we have a brand new EP coming out. Um, it is called Here, I Made This. And it will be on all the streaming platforms. You can go to Bandcamp, you can go to iTunes, Spotify, YouTube Music. Physical copies? Not right now. However, we have old copies of our EP on tape cassette because we're cool. Um, June 28th for that. And if you want to come see us, we are having our EP release party here in Hamilton, July 19th at Clifford Brewing Company. Um, so yeah, please come by in the city and check that out. That would be very cool. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to Steve Stronger Than Ever videos for having me out doing this interview. Um, Steve does really cool shit for a lot of bands, especially in the Hamilton area. Um, tons of appreciation for what he does. So check out the other videos on this channel, subscribe to this channel, do all those things that the algorithm wants you to do for Stronger Than Ever. And uh, go to a local show, check out a local band. Be a cool person. Thank you.